Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone is doing well. I got another Street Fighter news video for you guys today. I just couldn't resist, man. I had to make another one. So today we're gonna be talking about a new Luke edition for Street Fighter V that was announced, as well as confirmation from the Street Fighter director himself on hints of the Street Fighter storyline actually taking place after the events of Street Fighter 3. So let's get right to it. So first off, like I said, guys, Capcom has indeed announced another hard copy version of Street Fighter V being released. They announced it on the official Street Fighter Twitter for Japan. So they announced this actually a couple of weeks ago, and I didn't talk about it before because I figured they announced it outside of Japan at some point here, but they haven't yet. Maybe they're waiting for Luke's official release, and then they'll announce it alongside of that, but we still have no announcement on Luke either. He's supposed to come out this month, and at this point, since we're halfway through, I'm going to assume that he's either going to be delayed or he's going to be coming out at the end of the month. Anyways, this will be the final definitive version of Street Fighter V. Man, I gotta feel like I've said that before. Have I said that before? Anyways, if you're confused, this is basically just going to be a champion edition of the game that includes the final roster of characters, the final season. So that includes your Dan, your Rose, your Akira, and Oro, and of course, Luke. And this is a great opportunity. Maybe you're excited for Street Fighter VI and you haven't played Street Fighter V in a while and you want, you know, your definitive copy now and get those characters. Or maybe you have a friend that wants to learn Street Fighter and he's excited as well. This is another chance to get it. It's not something that we're forced to get. It's just something for people that don't already own the game, basically. Now, before we move on to other news, I could already tell in the comments section, you guys are going to be criticizing that box art, man. You guys are going to be like, Vesper, I could do a better job in Photoshop in 10 minutes on that thing than Capcom did. Are they trying to have the worst fighting game cover ever? And guys, I have to kindly remind you, they have no chance, man. Have you guys already forgot about the Dragon Ball Fighters box art? Still the worst fighting game cover of all time. All right, in more news, let's talk about this Street Fighter timeline stuff. So if you guys are really into the Street Fighter lore, like I know a lot of you guys are, there's some juicy info here. So the official director for Street Fighter, uh, Takayuki Nakayama, on his official Twitter, he was actually uh, tweeted from a fan asking some questions regarding the story and the timelines on where certain things take place, uh, specifically with a lot of the arcade endings for Street Fighter V. And he openly answered a lot of his questions, which was very surprising. Now, of course, this whole conversation was in Japanese, so hopefully there's no mistranslations here. This was first brought to my attention by my buddy Neoxon, and it was first translated by this guy named Rice on the Reset Era forums, and then further translated by my buddy Whitewind. And uh, yeah, I'll try to just name off the important bits for you guys, and maybe I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys want to read it for yourselves. Now, one of the first big questions asked of the director was that some characters from the Street Fighter 3 universe are showing up in Street Fighter 5's story, such as the little girl that Chun-Li says, for example. So that must mean that Street Fighter 5 does take place close to the Street Fighter 3 timeline, right? And of course, with the arcade, a lot of the arcade endings with the new characters, we're getting hints of that as well. And Nakayama, the director, does actually confirm the story takes place almost at the same time as Street Fighter 3 in some instances, sometimes slightly before, and sometimes slightly after Street Fighter 3. Director Nakayama gives us some examples of this with Ed's story ending when he forms Neo Shadowloo. He says this is occurring at the same time as Street Fighter 3. That's crazy. The fan also asked about, you know, Yurian knowing about Gil and uh, Sean winning a tournament in Laura's arcade mode ending. And the director actually confirmed that that's canon. Uh, he says that that happened parallel to Ed's ending. In fact, the director talked a lot about Neo Shadowloo and Ed. You guys remember Ed's ending where he sees his, his badass crew behind him? Well, we've seen Falk, right? And there's that big gorilla, and there's that dude with the knife and the long beard. Well, the director named the gorilla. The gorilla's name is Baba Miwalimu. Am I pronouncing that right? Which appears to be a Swahili for father teacher. So that's pretty cool. So that's actually a character, apparently. And each member of the Neo Shadowloo inherited a different characteristic from M. Bison. So M. Bison, I don't know, he's kind of planning this thing where he's like splitting up his powers in different people. Uh, Fall can inject cycle power into objects, whereas Ed can eject cycle power. And the guy with the knife, apparently he can teleport. He's crazy. And the gorilla is super smart. And apparently Ed's name itself is a, is a mistake. Nakayama wrote a note for one of the designers uh, saying ED, which stood for Ending Boy, talking about Street Fighter 4 when he saw him with Balrog. 
and the designer mistook that for Ed as the abbreviation, as the actual name. And Nakayama thought it was actually cool and stuck with it. And that's like the most Street Fighter story ever. Finally, the director was given a lot of hints on Bison, supposedly a uh, reason for splitting up his abilities. And maybe he knew he was going to have a confrontation with Ryu, and he wants to come back in some way. And they're just basically, you know, saying, hey, Bison's never dead. I'm, I'm sure we all know that already. But his powers are split within Neo Shadowloo. Uh, and the fan also asked about, you know, if Ed confronted Bison yet. And the director said he isn't sure. He's not going to drop too many hints. But, you know, the, the fan asked if he's allowed to talk about this. And the director said it was fine, which is really cool. He's openly talking about this. But I think this gives us a really huge hint looking into the future of Street Fighter with Street Fighter 6. Because at first we thought, hey, maybe they're going to do a big reset on the storyline with Rose. But I think it's a little bit more complicated than that since the story already is taking place a little bit after Street Fighter 3. So with Street Fighter 6, there's a huge possibility that we're going to be taking events maybe during Street Fighter 3 and after at the same time. We got Rose stuck in a time loop. We got Ryu being trained by Oro. We have Alex, who's, you know, the salvation that kills Utopia. And we have Neo Shadowloo that might play a big part in Street Fighter VI with, you know, lingers with M. Bison's power. And then, of course, we have Luke. Where is he in the story? He's most likely the main character. And, of course, that's going to be leading into G, which was really hyped up in Street Fighter V. I know you guys have been paying attention to the lore a lot more than I have, so I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on that on the comments below where you guys think this storyline is heading. But this is a lot more exciting than a reboot, I think, knowing that we're already a little bit past and they confirm these things. So it's good to know that Calcom actually has a storyboard written out for these characters, but is Neil Shadowloo going to be interesting enough in Street Fighter VI if they show up? And of course, we're going to have a lot more new characters than just Luke. So I'm interested to see where it goes. So I'll keep you guys posted when we get some more info. No Street Fighter 6 announcement yet, of course, and no Luke. And now looking that we're halfway through November, the next targeted time would probably be closer to the Game Awards. That'd be a huge event to, to announce something, but we'll see. I'll keep you guys posted when they finally talk about Luke. So I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy, guys. Peace.